Happy Tuesday, all things Montessori. I'm so excited for today's episode. It is so much fun and I don't even really want to talk too much about it in the intro. I just really, really want to get into it. So I hope you enjoy this amazing episode all about dance and movement with Kay Ikeda from Australia. This episode's brought to you by Sapling Supply. Sapling Supply has been a supporter of all things Montessori for many months now. They are so fantastic. If you're looking for any furniture needs for your Montessori classroom, your Montessori home environment, anything you need, they are there to help you out. The pieces come pre-assembled. How great is that? So you can head on over to Sapling Supply's website. It's linked below. And you can get 10% off anything site-wide using our promo code ATM10. Once again, that's anything site-wide, 10% off using our promo code ATM10. And of course, this episode is brought to you by Patreon. Patreon is an amazing way that you can help support all things Montessori. Of course, everybody supporting us, whether you're a Patreon or not, thank you so much. I would not be able to make this podcast possible if it wasn't for our amazing community. But if you want to become a patron of All Things Montessori, it's super easy. You just head on over to patreon.com. You can search All Things Montessori, and then you can select a donation level. Um, also, you can join for a few months and then decide you don't want to do it or, it, it, you know, join a little bit. List, there's some bonus episodes on there, and then you don't have to support it anymore. It's really up to you. That's why I really like Patreon because you can kind of customize it to be your own experience. But I do, I so appreciate everybody who is supporting us, whether you're a Patreon member or not. I also, I want to welcome Jen. She's a new patron of All Things Montessori. Jen, thank you so much for becoming a patron of All Things Montessori and helping me make this podcast possible. And without further ado, here is my amazing interview with Kay Ikeda from Australia, all about dance and movement. Well, I'm so excited today. I have a friend from literally across the world with me today, who I've only met over the internet, which is funny, um, but nonetheless, I'm so delighted she's here. I have Kay Ikeda with me today from Australia. Um, welcome, Kay. I'm so excited you're here. No, thank you, Rachel. Good to be with you. Yeah. So where in Australia are you exactly? Um, I'm in Sydney. Sydney. You are in Sydney. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. We were just talking right before we got on the, on the recording about the challenges of time zones Yeah. and, uh, (laughs) and how to schedule this because I'm doing this in the early morning and she's doing this in the later evening. So it's fun. Yeah. Um, so Kay, I want to ask you first and foremost, I ask everybody, uh, what your Montessori story is. So what brought you to the beautiful world of Montessori? Oh, I know. It's uh, so fortunate that I have come across the world of Montessori. Oh, look, the actually the introduction to Montessori was through a choreographer that I had worked with. Um, so I studied um, a Bachelor of Arts in Dance and a Bachelor of um, Education together. And um, I had this fabulous mentor um, at university whose son attended a Montessori preschool. Interestingly, during my education degree, I don't think Montessori was really mentioned. (laughs) And, yeah, yeah, I think maybe possibly clumped together with Steiner, you know, which tends to often happen. Mm -hmm. Um, But it was really through this choreographer and one of her dancers attended Um, did an observation at the preschool and she was telling me all about what she saw and I was like wow that sounds incredible Mm -hmm. Um, all this you know choice making that the children are doing and using their hands and it just sounded like a magical world and while I was studying I was also working in um, an after-school care setting as well as working part-time as a teacher's aide in a primary school. And kind of thinking, wow, maybe that's a better way, (laughs) you know, of educating children. And so, yeah, when I heard about Montessori, I thought, oh, this is something I really want to uh, look further into. And, uh, 
eventually I did a an online job search on um, this search engine called Seek and found that there was an assistant teacher teacher's assistant position going at a school in Bondi, um, which was where I, I used to live. And um, I contacted them and then that was it really. I had the interview um, mm. and then uh, they um, supported me through the training as well. They said, oh, there's oh, a nice. 6 to 12 training happening. Um, would you like to do it? We'll support you. I was like, wow, this is incredible. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, so things started to just kind of fall into um, into place. You know, a lot of people told me like, oh, uh, you know, it's going to be really, really hard, this 6 to 12 training. I was like, oh, you know, I've done <laughs> university studies. How hard could it be? And then um, I did and I was like, wow. <laughs> yeah, it's so hard. <laughs> <laughs> this is beyond my imagination. I really loved everything that I learned through the training. And uh, yeah, and then it led me to working with um, beautiful six and nine year olds um, for the past 10 or so years. Yeah. Oh, nice. So you just were in Lower L after training? Yeah. yeah. Nice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, how do you feel about Lower L? Talk to me about that. <laughs> oh, I love, I love that six to nine age group. They mm-hmm. are so enthusiastic. That's what I love about them is they, they get so excited about the world. and It's really infectious. Um, yeah, they're so excited. They're so excited. Um, mm-hmm. They can be so creative and so loving and full of life. And yeah, that's that's part of, yeah, working with low elementary children that I really, really loved. Yeah. Mm. I know. They just, they come in and they're just like so brazen with all kinds of excitement mm-hmm. about every little thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's exhausting, but it's also amazing. So mm-hmm. what drew you to the elementary age? Was it sort of a no brainer? Like, oh, I'm, I'm just speaking because I was convinced that I needed to do primary training just because I had worked with young children. Mm-hmm. And then I did a little bit more research and um, kind of figured out what would fit best with me personally. And it was mm-hmm. elementary instead of mm-hmm. primary. So, so what led you to work with elementary kids? Well, I think, you know, the, at university, when I studied education, it was more trained to work with high school students. Okay. And um, <laughs> I went and did my practicum and um, I was like, oh, I don't know. I don't know if I'm really. <laughs> um, yeah. I'm not sure if I can, you know, work with this age group the best. And I was working in, um, I don't know if you guys have after school care. Like um, we do, yeah. we do. But in what what way are you describing? There, um, so there's a there was a primary school that that I would, and within the primary school they had this care after school care center that okay. children can go to after three o'clock, and you know the parents were working, then they go to um, after school care and do. Yeah, we have similar things. iterations of that. So like a lot of schools will have like a, they might have a separate after school program. Um, but it's usually connected to the school, but yeah. then there's also, there's some, there's some separate ones, but yeah, we, we definitely have that in America because people here work all the time. So mm, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Often yeah. Care for, for children whose you know, parents are working. Yes. Time. And um, so I was working with the, well, in America, I think you call them elementary, we say primary, but yes. um, elementary right. aged children. And I really loved working with them. And so I really, yeah, I was just really drawn to that, that age mm-hmm. group between six and 12. And, um, and so, yeah, it was a no brainer for me to do the, the AMI six to 12 training and then, and then to go on from there working, working with that age group. Yeah. I love it. I love that age group too, obviously, mm-hmm. cause that's <laughs> who I worked with. You have an exciting new venture that I want to talk with you about today. And it's, it's such a fascinating section 
of education, especially with our work in Montessori, because I think that um, it's sort of, there's a little bit of a blank in the Montessori mm. curriculum with this particular topic. And that is the topic of dance and movement. Mm. Now, if you think about the toddler age, it's all about how they move, literally. Like they're just learning how to be a person. Yeah. And while there's definitely mentions of dance, like in my training, we learned, um, it's called the Virginia Reel. It's a group dance. So we learned, you know, some stuff. But I went into the classroom I mean, I'm not a dancer and I just was like, I don't know what to do. So I ended up not doing anything. Mm-hmm. So, and that's my own experience. And so let's talk about dance in the, in the Montessori classroom and also your new amazing adventure with <laughs> your new, I don't know, platform Mm. service whatever we want to call it maybe we'll maybe we'll figure out what to call it during this episode yeah <laughs> it's so exciting um, though let's yeah, talk we'll about get it some clarity through our conversation <laughs> um oh, look you know when I was when I started doing the training and actually I did the foundation course I don't know if you call it the foundation course. yeah we yeah. called it that too yes with the three to six yes I loved yes, it it's so I, interesting oh, wow Montessori talks so much about movement Mm -hmm. and then, you know, learning about the different, you know, activities. There was so much around the exactness of movement and, you know, Mm -hmm. I was like, wow. And then, and so movement kept coming up and then in our 6 to 12 training, you know, we were looking at all these different areas that we can explore with the children. Mm. And, um, you know, there was art and music and, and, um, but, but dance didn't quite emerge. And I was like, oh, okay. Um, but for me, it was like, it made, it made total sense to bring dance and movement exploration into the classroom and with the, the work with the children. And so there was just so many parallels in what we do in the classroom with the children that can be explored with with movement. So when I was working in, in the classroom, if children were, say, exploring concepts of angles and lines, you mm-hmm. know, I just could immediately see how that can be explored through movement because it's all about, you know, creating shapes in space and you can... Um, explore those concepts or guide the children to explore those concepts through through movement, um, whether it's on the spot or traveling through space, you know, following a particular pathway. And then, you know, when I was doing like the grammar work with the children. I was just thinking about the grammar work. Yeah. Actually, was, that's funny you bring that up. Yeah, let's talk about that. Like verbs, adverbs. Mm-hmm preposition I mean that's all the yeah. language of movement totally. you know, um, mm-hmm. different movements how you do the movement that's the adverb you know and in mm-hmm. dance we can talk about that as dynamics you know um, the quality of the movement um, and then the preposition of the relationship between bodies in space you know next to each other behind you know opposite you know all, all those things um, mm-hmm. I could just see the how it can marry so beautifully and so um, I brought those things in (laughs) as kind of follow-up or ways of um, exploring those concepts with the children you know I also did things with the children where it was like a more like a a dance class I guess that was separate to weaving it into the classroom and that was more to give the the language of of dance or language of movement, ways of thinking about space. Um, we call it the elements of dance, okay. um, which is space, time, dynamics, and relationships. And once I gave the children the, the vocabulary, they could actually improvise and explore those concepts and then and then giving them the tools of composition like you know, you can repeat or you can do it in synchrony. You can do it 
um, as a canon, whatever phrases of movement that they created, there were ways of structuring that and manipulating and guiding the children to create their own movement phrases and basically to compose. Much in the same way that, you know, we introduce visual arts concepts, I think, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. like the elements of art, mm -hmm. um, colour and line and shapes. Sure. Again, like a lot of the language in art is the same, I think, in dance as well. So, yeah, slowly, slowly I just found ways of incorporating. I <laughs> love that. Um, with the children and I, I was always just blown away by their creativity. Like, yeah, I was going to ask you how they responded to it. I'm assuming well, but can you talk about how they, you know, I think about the elementary characteristics and that's sort of where my brain goes about how they're mm -hmm. going to, you know, really be interested in these, in these things. I mean, quite frankly, if you introduce something that you love, they're probably going to love it because they love you. Yeah. So how did they respond to this dance and what, in what avenues did they take it? Oh, they, they responded so openly, you know, really embracing it. And like you said, I think that enthusiasm, you know, catches on. Mm -hmm. um, and, oh, they, they just, um, I think the, the kind of dance and movement exploration that we were doing in the classroom was improvisation based. Like it's all yeah. it's about giving the steps and learning the steps. It's, it's the children generating their own movement. And I think the Montessori approach to learning, which is a lot, you know, child directed and children making choices and decisions and that kind of exploratory way of learning allows the children to really, um, go into this process with an open mind and an open heart and they, they just um, don't seem to have as many filters, you know, like that stop them from experimenting and um, exploring. So I haven't really, I didn't really explore, uh, I didn't experience much resistance or, you know, anything like that. Um, there were some, you know, it was optional. It made it optional for, yeah. for children to show whatever they created as a group, you know, a small group or a pair. Mm -hmm. um, and often they were very willing to share. Yeah. I mean, creating a safe, safe space around that is really important. Absolutely. Letting yeah. them know that it's okay to express themselves in really any kind of way. You know, it really mm -hmm. reminds me of the music section in in a way where I think a lot of children love music so fiercely, but something happens as we age. You know, I'm a musician, so I was mm -hmm. classically trained, but music kind of has, and I don't know if dance is the same way, music can sort of be elitist in some ways where it's like, mm -hmm. oh, you don't have training you know, so it, it can turn people away, but, but, you know, yeah. does that make sense? Is dance kind of mm -hmm. similar? I think so. Yeah. I think so because it can be a, a domain of incredible high intense training. <laughs> right. And the, and similar to classical musicians and, and being trained in that way, the, the training is rigorous. So I can understand being held to that high standard. However, <laughs> I, I long for just more openness and especially with dance, you know, introducing that to young children, obviously they are loving it because dance is an amazing, fun way to express yourself. But what happens when you become an adolescent or something and then you don't have the tools or maybe don't feel comfortable enough to express yourself that way because you're not a seven-year-old anymore in that safe environment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. I feel like the same thing happens with music sometimes. Mm -hmm. So I, my, my yeah. point being, I think it's a beautiful thing to provide a safe, welcoming, exciting environment where, yeah, dance is work. It is amazing it's an amazing use of your body to know how to take up space. You know, that kind of goes into yeah. grace and courtesy. Yeah. <laughs> like, um, 
It's a beautiful thing to teach young children. And I am so excited that you're entering this space um, and providing tools for educators to be able to implement these things. And I want to talk more about that, yeah. about what exactly you're going to be offering the Montessori right. space. Yeah. Because I'm Thank I'm jealous. You. I wish I would have had this when I was in the classroom because I was dance was something I I mean, I have dancers in my family. I'm not a dancer, but I'm always just so in awe of dance. So to yeah. help someone move yeah. more gracefully as a very clumsy person, that just seems like a real <laughs> gift. <laughs> Well, I guess, you know, I've, so since, uh, so I've, I've uh, taken a break from teaching full time in the classroom. And during the break, um, this idea that's been kind of mulling at the back of my mind mm -hmm. had a chance to emerge. Mm -hmm. And I, um, you know, I've had other people say, oh, you know, you, know, you should do more of this dance in the Montessori community. And so what emerged was, um, has a name now, which is Montessori Dance. Um, and it's a, it's what I'm offering. It's a service for educators as well as for, for children, offering workshops to integrate dance or, you know, we might want to just call it creative movement expression. Mm -hmm. It's kind of reimagining what dance is um, and bringing it, you know, integrating it into the life of the classroom um, because, you know, as Montessori um, guides, we're all generalists, yes. you know, we're not mathematicians, but we do mm -hmm. offer a presentation on, you know, on maths or geometry, history, Absolutely. you know, biology, all these areas. And we're generalists and we want to give that idea to the children that you you don't have to be, um, anyone can practice music. Anyone can um, engage with mathematical concepts and explore it. And, and so I want to offer that the same spirit with dance. You know, it's not just for the select few, like we were saying about the same with music, you know. You know, often um, I talk to other people about dance and like, oh, it's not for me. You know, oh, I don't do that. It's not something I do. Mm -hmm. and, um, you know, there, there is that kind of idea that dance perhaps is for the select few who are yeah. highly trained, or that you have to have this background in, in dance moving. Yeah, I, I want to offer to the educators, you know, skills and tools and understandings of these elements of dance just in the same way that we um, learned about the elements of art you know and and to feel empowered to be able to bring that into the classroom and offer it as another language of expression you know um, in the same way music is and you know spoken and written language all you know all the same absolutely and, and yeah, and, you know, dancing is actually something that human beings have been doing forever. You know, it's yeah. actually a human natural experience mm -hmm. and you don't need to be highly trained to dance. Mm -hmm. And and I think in other cultures, dance is much more integrated into the daily lives and I into agree. the whole kind of fabric, you know. Um, but perhaps in your culture and the culture that I live in now, you know, in Australia, it's kind of like it's a bit separate. Yeah. You, know? you dance in a dance class that's very structured. Yes. Or, or maybe you go out to, I don't know, a nightclub <laughs> and you dance. No, yeah, absolutely. You know? Or it's kind of a bit private somewhere at home. You just do it quietly or, I don't know, it's just not as um, integrated. But I think it can be. <laughs> Definitely. You know? and, and so um, I just see that perhaps that the monster environment can be one way that we can bring in movement and mm -hmm. creativity and expression through movement um, in a in a safe and exploratory way yeah i i am um, one of the the people who really um inspired me 
is this um, Czech choreographer called um, Yuri Killian. And um, he, in the 80s, came out to Australia and he witnessed this incredible um, congregation, <laughs> mm-hmm. a gathering of all these um, Aboriginal, so the Indigenous people of Australia, um, and perhaps the Torres Strait Islander people as well. I think they, you know, there are all these different communities spread out all over Australia, and they congregated, they gathered on this island, Groot Island, in the 80s, and they had this incredible, I don't know, four or so days where they just danced and these groups came and they just danced from dawn to dusk and and here is Yuri Killian this Czech dancer choreographer you know I don't know if he was part of creating this gathering or if he was invited but he witnessed this and he was so profoundly moved by how dance is just part of their culture it's part Mm -hmm. of it life Mm -hmm. and that children and adults and elderly like they all were part of it they would all take part in this and um and and he also said this beautiful and I'm paraphrasing him uh, paraphrasing him but he said something around you know when he watched he saw that every group stamped the ground in some way but it was all a bit different because everyone stamped in relation to the environment that they found themselves in. So the the ground was different, you know, Mm -hmm. and so they stamped in a different way. And um, and he said this thing, something along the lines of he realised that the way the human intelligence can express itself through dance is infinite. Mm -hmm. And I just found that so moving and, and such a generous and inclusive way of looking at dance, that there's no just one way, you know, that, that there's this infinite way that we can express our intelligence through dance. And, you know, I just found that really inspiring and that that's the kind of message, you know, I'd like want so educators to to um take with them um yeah in sharing dance with children Mm. I mean what you're saying is so pure in that it is it's just an expression Mm. I mean it's so much more than that but it's just an avenue of getting whatever's in your soul whatever's on your heart whatever you're thinking about learning about it's getting it out And I mean, I have to admit every time, I mean, when you were talking about dancing being in all these certain boxes, I think that's really true. Like a dance class, or maybe you go to like a dance aerobics class, Mm -hmm. (laughs) whatever. Yeah, yeah. Every single time that I dance, wherever that is, it brings me abundant amounts of joy. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. I think it's, it's usually the case when... There's a rush of energy when you're dancing and especially when you're dancing with someone or anything like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's a, it's such a special, special connection and human beings thrive on connection. And then if you yeah. think about the six to nine, six to 12 environment, there are, they're social, they're, you know, excited beings. And also, you know, the, the best thing about the elementary or primary, you know, you guys call it primary in Australia, so I don't want to confuse anybody. <laughs> but six to 12 year olds, the best thing in terms of dance is, you know, it's right before adolescence. So it's like this beautiful window where I remember just watching the children in my classroom. They didn't care what they looked like. They weren't thinking, oh, does that person like me or I mean, it's, it's this like beautiful segment of life where they're just totally excited about being alive and it's Mm -hmm. not, it hasn't gotten complicated yet. Mm -hmm. You know what Mm -hmm. I'm saying? 
Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I think introducing concepts and ideas to them like dance or any kind of art form, they're not sitting there thinking, oh, well, what's everybody going to think of this? Or, oh, I'm mm-hmm. going to look stupid doing mm-hmm. that. It's like, oh, yeah, let's do it. And yeah. that is amazing. Yeah. It's just this, it's this perfect window because, you know, as we age, uh, we just get so complicated with our, with our baggage. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and um, I, I just, I think this is such a gift that you're going to give to educators. And because I, I know it, it's, it's tough to get up there as a teacher in an area that you're not comfortable in. And then you're supposed to give a lesson on it. It's really yeah. hard. I felt like that um, with well, in a lot of areas. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> it takes a lot of courage. It takes it? a lot of courage, and and especially yeah. with you know, I saw it with other teachers in different areas. Everybody has their their area where they're not particularly confident in. But I think I don't know. I'm I'm pretty sure you'd agree with this. It doesn't need to be an elaborate dance lesson. Right. You just need to give them the tools because I'm sure the children take it and run with it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's you don't need to make up steps <laughs> for them to to learn. And in fact, you might not even have to move very much. Mm. You, know, you might you might be inspired to because sure. it's exciting. But um, it's it's more about it's that planting the seed you know, exactly the children and they really do take off in really unexpected, beautiful, creative ways. I was just so moved by what, what um, the children created, you know, in response to say, you know, a sculpture or, sure. you know, or, or about, um, oh, I had some children who were researching about pandas and they created a dance about pandas. Oh my gosh. Amazing. It's part of their research project, um, oh. but you know, like there's, you can express those things that children learn through movement. Like yeah. it, it's, um, it's the possibilities are endless, and um, they just come up with the most incredible things. They yeah. come up with things I would never think of, on mm. and like ever. Like they, yes. their minds go. That's the beauty of it because we give them the space to explore and then mm. that's what happens. They yeah, take it to exactly. they take it to amazing, amazing places. Mm. Oh mm. well I'm so excited about this. Um when is your website live yet? Yeah, yeah. The website oh. um is now live. Okay. It went live um at the start of June. Um which is super exciting. Um Yes, yeah, so the website is um, www.montessoridance.com.au and, um, yeah, I'm offering workshops for educators as well as for children. Amazing. Yeah. I will link it below too so anybody listening can find Montessori Dance and, and read all about it and see the amazing work that you're doing. Um, you. So. Okay, before we before we wrap up here, um, whenever I've been interviewing teachers or anybody in the Montessori sphere, I sort of ask um, this question, which it's a little cheesy, but I think anybody working in education, we always need advice and support or, or whatever. Mm-hmm. So I was just going to ask you if you have any um, words of wisdom, advice for uh, the teachers out there right now, and it can be tailored to dance or, or anything, just any words that you want to share with the oh, community. I know it's a big question. No pressure. Big <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that um, probably the most, one of the most important lessons I've learned is to be kind to yourself. Uh, be gentle and kind. Um because our work is immense, it's huge, mm-hmm. and um, we do the best that we can every day. And so to know that <laughs> yeah. and that what you do is enough um, and to enjoy the children, you know, and to, and to connect, connect with 
with others, connect mm-hmm. with other practitioners and, um, yeah, share your experiences and and to, to lean on each other, I think. Yeah, um, absolutely. That's so important. So important. Well, thanks so much for being here, Kay. This has been a delight. <laughs> um, absolute pleasure. Thank you so much, Rachel. Of course.